Welcome. This is the third video on the construction of hyperreal numbers. Today we are going to try to understand what's a filter. This is what we need to complete the definition of the equivalence relation we have previously talked about. And in particular, the question we still have is when can we say that a set is large? This translates into does x belong to the filter f? So let me first start with a power set. The power set of X is a set of all set A belonging, which are subset of X, simply the set of all subsets. Example, where X is given by the set ABC, all the possible subsets are given here. They include the empty set and the set X itself. And the power set, P of x, is given here. And I am now too lazy to write it in full. It quickly becomes painful to write explicitly. Now that we know what are power sets, we can define a filter on x. It is a non-empty collection that we call f of subset of x. In other words, it is a subset of the power set of x such that two axioms are satisfied. First, the intersection axiom, saying that if A and B belongs to F, then the intersection of A and B must belong to F. And the superset axiom, saying that if A belongs to F and A is a subset of B, then B must belong to F. One should note that those two axioms are exactly what we need to satisfy one of the constraints that we listed in the previous lecture. If A and B are large and the intersection of A and B is a subset of C, then C is large. Now replacing large by belongs to F, the same statement becomes if A and B belongs to F and the intersection of A and B is a subset of C, then C belongs to F. If one use axiom one, we see that if A and B belongs to F, then the intersection of A and B belongs to F. And I can now use axiom 2, which I rewrite here, and use the intersection of A and B as the set U here, and U C as the set V, and I can now show that C belongs to F. So those, the two axioms are exactly what we need in order to satisfy the constraint that we had. One thing that should be clear by now is that A is large translate into A belongs to F. Another constraint we had pointed out in the previous lecture was that the empty set cannot be considered as large, so the empty set cannot belong to F. And in fact, we can show that the empty set belongs to F if and only if F is equal to the power set. The proof is very simple. If f is equal to the power set, then obviously the empty set belongs to f. And if the empty set belongs to f, then any set A belongs to f because of axiom 2, since the empty set is a subset of any set A. And therefore, f is equal to the power set. This is in fact telling us that a filter with an empty set is just not something of interest here. Which leads us to define a proper filter as a filter which simply does not include the empty set. Another important definition is the definition of a principal filter. The principal filter on X generated by Y is what we are going to write F of Y and it's such that the set y belongs to f of y. Here is an example with x equal 1, 2, 3 and a power set we already know. The filter f1 should include the one element set with 1 in it. Here it is. And then all sets for which this particular set is a subset. So 1, 2, 1, 3 and 1, 2, 3. And then you can verify that the intersection of all those sets already belong to the filter, hence 
verifying it satisfy axiom one. Another example we have here with the set x equal one, two, three, four, and the filter generated by the set one, two. This is not the principal filter, as a set, as a filter is said to be principal when it is generated by a one element set only, and here we have two elements. So the filter must include the set one, two. And it's going to include as well 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 4, and 1, 2, 3, 4. In general, the filter generated by the set Y can be written F of Y, and it is a collection of sets A, elements of the power set, such that Y is a subset of A. And we can verify that both axioms uh, of filters are uh, verified by this definition. Now comes the time to define an ultra filter. filter. It is a proper filter, which means it does not include the empty set, and it must satisfy the following property. For every A, which are elements of the power set P of X, A belongs to F, or the complement of A belongs to F. Well, the complement of A is X from which you subtract um, all the elements in A. I'm just going to say X minus A. This, is in, this in fact should remind us of a constraint we had discussed in the previous lecture, um, which, which said that one of A and N minus, or N minus A belong, uh, is large. Let us look back at the previous example, where we had the principal filter F1 on the set X, that was given by this, and the power set which is given by this big guy here. You see that F1 here is an ultra filter. You see the empty set does not belong to F1, but its complement, 1, 2, 3, belongs to F1. 1 does belong to F1, but its complement, 2, 3, does not. 2 does not belong to F1, but its complement does. And 3 does not belong to F1, but its complement does. So F1 is an ultra filter. In another example, we had constructed the filter F1, 2 on the set X, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, which is given here, and F12 is not an ultra filter because the set with one element here, 1, does not belong to F, and its complement, the set 2, 3, 4, does not belong to F either. In general, this is the definition we have seen for the filter generated by a set Y. And it is easy to see that if B belongs to F, then Y is a subset of B by definition. Therefore, Y is not a subset of the complement of B, and the complement of B does not belong to F. However, if B is a subset of Y, then B does not belong to F of Y, and its complement does not belong to F of Y. So in general, um, a filter generated by a subset Y is not an ultra filter. Let me define another type of filters, which we call cofinite or fréché filter. It is a set of all sets A, elements of the power set, for which x minus a is finite. First, if we observe that if x is finite, then x minus a is finite for all possible set a, and therefore the filter is exactly equal to the power set. Alternatively, if x is not finite, 
um, and if we assume a to be finite, then x minus a is infinite. a does not belong to the filter. Hence, all the set a that belongs to the filter are infinite. It is, however, not a null to a filter. And the best way to, to show that is to take an example. Um, the cofinite filter constructed on the set of natural number um, does not include either the set of even number or the set of one number. And so because one is a complement of the other, f this cofinite filter is not a neutral filter. We are now going to spend a little bit of time trying to understand the following statement. If a null to a filter contains a finite set, then it contains a one element set and it is principal. So we could try to prove this statement by starting by writing what we know and aiming to derive the conclusion, but that's hard work. So instead, we are going to proceed by contradiction. Assume we have an ultra filter F that is containing no one element set. So assume we have an ultra filter, as I said, containing no one element set. That means that um, this element A does not belong to the filter, and that is true for all possible A. We can now look at the complement x minus a, which must therefore belong to the filter because we have an ultra filter. And we can then look at two elements like this, x minus a and x minus b. The intersection of those two sets is simply x minus ab, and that must belong to f because of the first axiom that defines filters. Therefore, the complement AB must not belong to F, and that tells us that F does not contain any two element set. So we know that A does not contain any one element set and does not contain any two element sets. But because it is an ultra filter, it must contain the intersection of the complement of a one element and a two element set. Which means that this x minus abc belongs to f, and therefore abc does not belong to f. So f does not contain any three elements set. And by induction, we show that f cannot contain any finite set. So if f contains a finite set, that means that f contains a one element set. Then you can easily convince yourself that an ultra filter containing a finite set is principal. Hence, if a non-principal ultra filter exists, if there is such a thing, then it cannot contain any infinite set. It also follows that a non-principal ultra filter must contain all cofinite sets, so that the cofinite filter is a subset of all non-principal ultra filters. which leads me to the last statement here. Any infinite set has a non-principal ultra filter on it. I will not discuss the steps leading to this statement in this video, but ideally we would like to leave no stone unturned, so I plan on coming back to explain this in more details. The previous statement is telling us there is an object f of n that is built on the set of natural number, that is a filter that does not contain the empty set, that contains all cofinite sets, and that is an ultra filter. In other words, an object satisfying all the constraints 
we had regarding the construction of the equivalence relation and the notion of large sets.